Now that we've covered the async task bearer implementation based on Project Reactor, let's talk briefly about the async task bearer framework that's provided for Rx Java. And what's interesting about this is the API is essentially the same with a few little tweaks to deal with the fact that Rx Java and Project Reactor don't have equivalent type systems. But the basic features and the basic capabilities and the basic motivation for this class is the same as the one for Project Reactor that we just talked about. So once again, when we're now we're talking about the, the Rx Java case studies, once again, all those big fraction case studies run their methods asynchronously, largely using the subscribe on method. So these methods are going to return before the computation is complete. That's just one of the wonderful features of using asynchronous processing with reactive streams in Rx Java. And therefore, as with Project Reactor, it's very helpful to have a single place to wait for many different asynchronous computations to complete. You can think of it basically as a, a barrier synchronizer that waits until all the asynchronous computations are done. So once again, we show kind of the main program that might exist for some of the case studies that we're talking about. They all look very similar. And in this case, we're going to be using the Rx Java version of async task barrier to register non-blocking method references that will in fact be run asynchronously under the hood. And we'll take a look at how they work later. So in this particular case, we're registering a bunch of methods that use the Rx Java single class, like test fraction reduction async or test fraction multiplication callable one or multiplication callable two and so on. And all of these methods run asynchronously. They return before the computations are finished and they return in this case, essentially singles. We can also use this to handle synchronous processing, though, again, as was the case with Rx, with the Project Reactor example, it's not that interesting to do it for that. It, it's nice because it's consistent, but really what's cool here is the, the use of asynchronous processing, not synchronous processing or blocking processing. What we do here as before, we go ahead and register all those method references, and then we say async task barrier run tasks. Run tasks, of course, is a static method that goes ahead and starts up all the processing. And we'll see how that works later when we talk about the implementation details of async task barrier for Rx Java. And then after you've started all the wheels in motion, then we call blocking get. Notice, by the way, there's a slight difference between Project Reactor, which has a method called block, and Rx Java, which has a method called blocking get. They both work more or less the same way, but they just have different names. And what blocking get does is it'll block the calling thread, as the name suggests, while all those other computations run in the background asynchronously. So kind of summarize this, the async task barrier for Rx Java provides a framework that allows asynchronous or synchronous tasks to run, thereby making sure that the calling method, the one that's kind of running all the tests in the case study, doesn't exit until all the async processing completes. And if you play around it for any length of time with Rx Java or Project Reactor, you very quickly realize that having this kind of a test driver is very helpful. And it actually turns out to be useful for other things as well, which is why I call it async task barrier as opposed to async test barrier or something like that, because it's really a useful utility class in its own right. We will explore the Rx Java based implementation of async task barrier later on in the course after we've had a chance to talk in more detail about the various methods and operators that you come to find in observable and in single as part of the Rx Java frameworks key classes. So we could cover this now, but I think you'd be confused because you would have to really have a lot of forward references to interesting, but somewhat complicated methods that are very powerful and very useful in this context, but will make a lot more sense after we've had a chance to look at those methods in more detail in their own, in their own isolation.